Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be here tonight in the house of the Lord. I'm already excited. I already felt the presence of God and here, and so I just want God to have his way tonight. And so we'll be studying the book of Hebrews chapter 6, some of it tonight. And so if you have your Bible, you can turn there, or you can follow us on the projector. And you that are joining us online, we thank you for joining us. Just um, open your heart to God and let God touch you tonight as we begin the Bible study. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you tonight for this Bible study. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to be here in the house of the Lord where we can come together and study the Word of God. We ask, Lord Jesus, that you will bless this Bible study, speak to our hearts and our minds, and help us as we look to you. In Jesus' name we ask these things. Amen. 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 Well, tonight we're in Hebrews chapter 6, but before we get into chapter 6, I just want to read a few verses in chapter 5, the last few verses, 11 through 14, because they will lead us into what the apostle was teaching us in Hebrews chapter 6. In verse 11, he said, Of whom we have many things to say, and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principle of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And so, as the writer continues this letter, you know, we've been dealing with different things in the book of Hebrews, and we're talking about the superiority of Christ, how that Jesus excelled everything, everyone and everything that the Jews ever had in their messengers to the angels and their high priests. We talked about the high priest, priest that God gave us the greatest high priest in Christ. And so now he began to challenge them. He began to challenge them. Now that God has given you the best, he said, don't take it for granted. Yeah? Now that God has given you the best, he said, let's take our relationship another level. Amen. Let's take things higher. Let's get closer to God. And he said, he said, um, we need, in order to do this, he said, we need to eat the right spiritual food that will cause us to grow and increase instead of just maintaining our existence as a Christian. And so he's challenging us as a child of God, as a Christian, that God wants us to go deeper in our relationship with him. God wants us to draw closer. He wants us to, to grow stronger and to be more fruitful. And he said we need to lay aside the milk and start a spiritual diet of real food. Food that will help us to grow strong and healthy. In other words, he's saying we need to eat like grown up. Amen? We need to get that plate and fill it up with some good food and, and, and things that will help us to grow and and become strong in God. Like I said, he's using the word milk and strong meat. He said, as a brand new Christian, we needed that milk. We need the sincerity of the word of God, the milk, the, the things that can cause us to, to, um, to, to grow at that stage in our life. But now that we have been serving God for a number of years, I've been serving God for you know, a, 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 a longer time, he said, we need something that will take us higher in God. Amen? He's something that will take us higher in God. And so, as we shared last week, we can't live on milk all our life. Amen. There comes a time when we got to lay aside the milk and we have to get food that is designed for our bodies. Amen. I mean, people that, that eat, uh, and I hate to see, I don't know what will happen if an adult or if a person just live on milk all their life. I will hate to see what they become as they grow. Maybe they will grow strong. I don't know. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I don't know. But I know from experience that every person, as they grow, their diet change. Amen? Amen. Their diet change. And so, as Christians, that's what he's calling upon us. He said, as we grow in God, we need to eat the right stuff. We need to get rid of the milk bottle. And we need to break out the knife and the fork. Right? 
<laughs> and you get rid of the milk bottle, put that, be done with that, that those times are over, and then we may go back to milk every once in a while, and we need to break out the knife and the fork and the spoon so we can feed ourselves right. And using that in the sense of the way I will teach it tonight is what he's pretty much saying is we need to lay aside grace for now and just move on to truth. Amen? Grace is the milk of the Word of God. We all need that. But we need the truth also. And so he tells us in um, the Gospel of John, he said Jesus was full of grace and truth. There are two things that the Lord was full of and that, that He brought to us, and that was the grace of God and the truth of God. The only problem is a lot of people are still stuck for many years on grace, and they never move on to the truth. Amen? And so they get saved by grace, and, and they start serving God by grace. And they're learning about grace and how to have the favor of God and the milk of the Word of God in their life. But as they serve in the Lord, they never move on. They never move on. They always want to claim grace, 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 which we all need. And we're not denying that and we're not discrediting that or belittle that. Without the grace of God, none of us would be here tonight. Mm -hmm. However, however, if we will grow and be what God wants us to be, we need the other half. Amen? We need the other half, which is truth. And so that's what we'll focus on tonight. And tonight's Bible study will, will do a lot of Bible reading. How about that? Bible study, a lot of Bible reading. And um, we're not going to get very far, I can tell you that already, because of what I'll be teaching tonight, something that I feel is important. And may the Lord help me. Amen? Mm -hmm. And so chapter 6, that leads us into chapter 6. He said, Strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason who even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And that leads us into chapter six, where he said in chapter six, verse one, he said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptism, and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And so he is sharing with us here tonight, as Christians, like I said, it's time for us to leave the fundamental truths of Christianity. Not to ignore it, not to do away with it, but to leave it aside, and to go on to something greater. Amen? And so he talked about the fundamental doctrines such as repentance. We know that that's how, you know, we get saved by repentance and, and, and accepting Christ into our life. But we can't just stay there all our life. Amen? Amen. God already saved us. He already washed our sins away. Now we got to move on to something better. Laying on of hands, we all know about the doctrine of if any is sick, the call for the elders of the church it will be the pastor or the ministers of the church. They lay their hands and pray, and the sick will recover according to their faith in God. Amen? Amen? And he said, lay that aside. We're not doing away with it, but we can't just build our life just upon that. Lay aside the doctrines of the resurrection of the dead. We know that Jesus rose from the dead. We know that the saints will rise when the Lord call, when they come back to take us out of here to rapture. And at the end, God will resurrect all the dead. We already know that. We know there is an eternal judgment. We know there is that we have to have faith in God. So all these things are fundamental things that are important, but we can't just dwell on them forever. Amen? Amen? And so that's what he's saying. He's not saying we should never teach about them or we should never, you know, preach about them. He's saying there comes a time in our life as Christians where we got to lay aside the basic truths of God and go on to the deeper truths. Amen? Amen. The things that will make us strong in God. And so it's time, what he was saying, is time to stop overemphasizing or abuse grace and to move on to living out the truths of God. You see, grace saves us from sin, but truth will keep us from sinning. Amen? And this is the reason why a lot of modern-day Christians find themselves driven into sin or given over to sin so easily is because they're still drinking out of the milk bottle when they ought to be cutting into that steak. Amen? 
They're still feeding themselves on the grace and the truth and all the, the easy things of God instead of digging deep into the Word of God and finding out the truths that God wanted to have. And so we find a lot of times, I'm not finding faults, but, but a lot of times you find that people make excuse. Even they, they profess to be Christians, and we're not, we're not criticizing them, but we're saying they profess to be Christians, but they never advance in their Christianity. They never grow. They never overcome little petty things. They never. They still find themselves falling into 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 sin over and over and over again. Easily, easily, curse word will slip out of their mouth, or they'll begin to lust after things they shouldn't lust after, or they begin to allow bitterness and, and jealousy and all these things to rule their life. And the reason why is because they're still stuck in grace. They've never moved on to find out the truth of God and to begin to eat the right spiritual food that can help them to overcome these things. And so tonight we want to talk about that. We want to, we want to emphasize that because the Bible is calling upon us to leave those things behind and to move on to something greater. Amen? Yeah. And so he's telling these disciples, yes, God gives you the best in Christ. Jesus is the greatest high priest. He's the greatest messenger. He's the best of the best of the best. God gave you the best. Now take this knowledge that you have, Jesus living on the inside of you, and now let's go on to be what God wants us to be. Amen? Amen. This is why, like I said, many people struggle to live right. They struggle with being a true and genuine Christian. It is because they spend too much time dwelling on grace instead of feeding themselves on the truth of God. If we want to live right, anybody want to live right? Then we have to eat right. <laughs> right? So a preacher, he keep talking about food. I'm talking about spiritual food tonight, right? If we want to live right, then we have to eat right. You know, in our natural sense, if all people eat is cakes and donuts, <laughs> amen, they're not going to be healthy and strong, amen? And they, but if they have a good, strong diet, it will do them better. And I'm not here to tell you how to eat. You eat however you want. Life is short. Enjoy your dessert. Amen? <laughs> you don't know if tomorrow is guaranteed, so you can cut yourself off with the good things in life if you want to, or you can eat with moderation. That's up to you, your life. Live it the way you want. But when it comes to spirituality, if we want to live right, if we want to be right, then we have to feed ourselves right. Strong meat, not milk. Truth, not grace. Obeying and living out the truths of God is the only thing that will move us to perfection in Christ. And the word perfection speaks of completion, becoming complete in God. And so let's look at verse 1 and 2 again. He said, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Of the doctrine of baptism, and of the laying on of hands, and of the resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And in verse 3 he said, and this will we do if God permits. So as you come to church a lot of times, you hear me preach about grace. You hear me preach a whole service may be about Jesus. The whole service may be about uh, the mercy of God or the peace of God. And then you come the next time, and it will be about living right and all that stuff. And so what he's saying here, if God puts it in our heart, if God permits it, we will teach and preach and, ex and exalt grace and, and all those things. But that's not the only thing we need. Amen? We need a balanced diet. We can't just live on grace, grace, grace. Amen? We need a balanced diet of grace and truth. Like I share, Jesus is full of grace and truth. And so we find today a lot of modern Christians, all they want is the grace of God, the love of God, and all those things, but they do not want to embrace the truth that is there also. And that's the reason why they struggle so much. He said if God permits, He's not discontinuing the work of grace. We need these things from time to time. The challenge is to go on to better things. If God permits, when God allows it, we will focus on repentance, we'll focus on faith, we'll focus on baptism. However, as a mature Christian, God is calling us to greater things. Time, in other words, he's saying, it is time for us to go out into the deeper water. Amen? We can't 
swim forever in the kitty section of the pool. Or the kid section, kitty, huh? The kid section of the pool. <laughs> we got to move out into something deeper because that's how we will really learn, whether, we'll really find out whether we know how to swim or not. Amen? I learned to swim in the Atlantic Ocean most of the time. <laughs> there was no shallow air. You go out there and the waves just take you and move you wherever you want to go. And if you can't swim, too bad. Amen? And so in life, that's how we learn whether or not we have the goods. Is we have to move away from our comfort zone. We have to move away from those shallow things. And Lord, give me the deeper things in life. Amen? Give me the deeper things in life. And so that's what he's calling upon us. He said... If God permits, verse 3, we will do it, but it's time for us to move on. Amen? And so tonight, Bible study, we're going to focus on some, some doctrines. And, and, and you know, I've been wanting for a long, long time to teach about this, many, many years now, and I haven't. But God knows. Amen? God knows because there may be a lot of people are watching or listen to us online that may need to know about this because... Uh, a lot of times before online, it was just being shared in the church. But now it may go beyond, and, and hopefully God can use it and open your eyes to see what the Bible is talking about tonight. So verses 4 through 6 is what we're going to focus on. Verses 4 through 6. He said, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened... And have tasted of the heavenly gifts, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again to repent unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So we will focus on this section of Hebrews chapter 6 tonight. And with it, we want to address a doctrine that is being taught in many denominations in church today. And that is the doctrine of unconditional eternal security. Or the doctrine as we will call it, once saved, always saved. And that is a very, very dangerous doctrine this is a, a really a massive lie and deception that Satan has successfully sneaked into the doctrines of many churches today. It is a false doctrine, and it is a very dangerous doctrine, and also a very damnable doctrine. The doctrine of once you come to Jesus and you repent of your sins, no matter what you do, you can never lose your salvation. Or you can never lose out from going to heaven. Now, I have had people in this church, not in this building, but the one over there, people who look me right in the face trying to debate this doctrine and, and justify it and, and everything. And, and they're so adamant about it because they were taught this in their church. And now when, and when they come to, to one of our churches or so, to another church and they hear the truth, they do not want to accept it. And I'm not sharing this, like I said, from a judgmental point of view. It is a very serious thing because so many people fall into it and they are on their way to destruction and they don't even know it. Amen? They're on their way to destruction and don't even know it. I remember going to a funeral and, and, and the person that passed away, their, their daughter, told me, you know, my mother didn't want anything to do with God, rejected God. And didn't want to go to church and hate all the stuff. But when she was a kid, I guess, she had accepted Christ into her heart. And so the preacher, he got up there and preached the gospel and put her into heaven. Because he said, well, she did it when she was a, as a child, so she's good to go for the rest of her life. I've had the guy told me right in, right in the church house. He said, I asked him, I said, you mean to tell me right now if, if, the, if Jesus should come back right now? And you decide you want to go out and sin and you're in bed with a woman committing adultery and the rapture take place, you're going to go? He paused for a second and said, yes, I'm going to go. <laughs> and so that's the, that's the part of what I'm trying to say, the seriousness is because it gives people a false hope. It gives them a false hope that, uh, you know, you come, you accept Christ as your life, you're good to go. No matter what you do, you're still going to make it. That is not truth. Amen. 
You have to live right all the way to the end. And so we'll show you that from this and many of the other scriptures, uh, which we may not get to tonight, but we'll, we'll try at least. The doc and that's what a doctrine of un unconditional eternal security is, that you are secured in Christ. Once you give your life to Jesus, you're secure. You cannot, uh, you cannot lose out. You cannot walk away. You're, you're sealed. They use all these um, biblical terms that the Bible used that we are sealed by the Holy Spirit and that no one can separate us from the love of God and that we're in the hands of Christ and no one can take us out. But they never stop to realize that nobody's going to do it, but we can. Amen? And nobody may be able to separate us from God, but we can separate ourselves. We have that freedom of choice. How many of you choose to come to church tonight? Nobody made you, right? That was a freedom of choice. God didn't pop you upside the head and bring you to church, put you in the car and bring you. He may have motivated you or dealt with your heart, but he didn't force you. Amen? And he's not going to force anyone to go to heaven. Heaven, we have to go to by our own free choice. And so tonight, and in this doctrine of unconditional eternal security, it is a doctrine that, may be, that many like because it gives them an excuse to avoid the strong meat that the Bible is teaching us here about or the deep truths of the Word of God, and it gives them a reason to be spiritually lazy and to cling to a false hope that because they say a prayer once and repent of their sins and accept Jesus into their life, that they are now set for eternity. And that's not true. Amen? This is a dangerous doctrine that is based upon misinterpretation of the Scriptures, and many people are deceived by it and will end up in the wrong place for all of eternity. And so to avoid this, we have to do our work. We have to do our part. We have to invest time to dig deep into the Word of God because our soul and our eternity depends upon it. Amen? And so tonight, I'm going to read it again one more time in Hebrews chapter 6, verses 4. And now he's talking about someone here, and we're going to talk about this for a little bit, about someone who were once a Christian, even baptized with the Holy Ghost, and is still walk away from God. And I know people try to change all this stuff. They said, oh, well, he said, you tasted of the heavenly gifts. That means you just tasted, you didn't ingest it. People find all kinds of ways to justify and to twist the Word of God. When the Bible speaks of the word taste, like you said, taste and see that the Lord is good, it means experience. Amen? Yeah. Experience it. You taste something, you're trying it, you're experiencing it. He said they have experience. And so when you read it, keep that in mind because there's so many people, I don't know why. I just don't get it. Why they want to twist the Word of God so much? Maybe because they're guilty of their own selves. I don't know. And they, they don't want to teach the truth. I don't understand that. I just don't understand it from a preacher's perspective. In verse 4, he said, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened. Who are the enlightened ones? Those that are saved. Amen? Yeah. And have tasted of the heavenly gifts. Who have tasted of the heavenly gift? Christians. The heavenly gift is what? Salvation. The heavenly gifts is the peace of God. The work of grace in our life. He said they have tasted of the heavenly gifts. And we're made partakers of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You cannot be made partakers of the Holy Ghost except you are born again. Amen? Yeah. So they were saved, and they got as far as being baptized in the Holy Ghost. And he said here in verse 5, and, has, and have tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come. They have tasted everything. They have, they have been experiencing everything. He said, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they have crucified to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So he's talking about someone who was once a Christian, but turned away from following Jesus and went back to living a life in sin without God. Amen? He said it's almost imp it's impossible to renew that person because they have forfeited everything that Jesus did. And they just testified to the world that Jesus didn't re re mean anything to them. Amen? And so what is he showing us here? He's showing us that that doctrine of unconditional eternal security is false. Amen? It is absolutely false because it is possible. Now, this is not to say that we should be 
scared or anything like that because God is not going to just reject you. God wants you to go to heaven. Amen. And God is going to do everything to help you. He's talking about we just have to make sure we do our part. Amen. Mm -hmm. Making it to heaven is not hard if we want to. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that's what it all comes down to. A lot of people love this doctrine of unconditional eternal security or once saved, always saved. They love it because they, they want to just take the easy way out. They want to follow in that broad way, as the Bible teaches. The way that leads to the, 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 the destruction. They don't want to stay on the straight and narrow where they have to squeeze themselves and get rid of all the excess baggage. Amen? They want to go to heaven and bring all their baggage with them. But you can't do that. Amen? Jesus said, the way is narrow, straight is the gate, and narrow is the way. And he said, few there be that will find it. And so that's the reason why many people embrace this doctrine. And so tonight, we're going to share some scriptures. And i got four minutes. I'm going to share some scriptures. Like I said, I'm not going to rush this because I've been wanting to teach this for years. But never... I mean, I've taught it, but not in this depth and this many verses of Scripture. But the first next verse of Scripture you want to look at is in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 through 31. And now in these cases that we're talking about here in, 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 in chapter 6, where he talked about that they walk away from God and stuff like that, he's dealing with, with someone who, um, who really turned from God. You know what I'm saying? Someone who rejected God. They were once saved, they were filled with the Holy Ghost, but somewhere along the line they got crossed up, and they decide that they're not going to serve God anymore, and then they went out and living in sin, and go back to all the old ways you want to share Sunday morning, if you build again the things which we destroy, we made ourselves transgressors, well they have made themselves a transgressor, and he said it's impossible, so that's a very severe case, that's someone who willingly turn away from God. It is possible. Amen? It is possible. And so these other verses will back up what I just shared there. In Hebrews 10, 26 through 31, he said in verse 26, For if we sin willfully, willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. What was the sacrifice for sin? The sacrifice for sin was Jesus Christ, the blood of Christ. Amen? We received that blood when we got saved, right? That was our sacrifice. That was our sin offering. Jesus became our sin offering. And so he said, God, that sacrifice was added to us through salvation. God provided a sacrifice. The blood was used for the cleansing of our sins. God washed us. God made us clean. Listen to what he's saying. He said, now, after that, he said, if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth, he said, there remained no more sacrifice. It means that that sacrifice don't cover you. Amen. That sacrifice doesn't cover your present sin. You have to go and make it right again. Amen? And so there's a lot of people that think because they receive Christ in their life once, that, and I said it, unconditional eternal security, that no matter what they do, that sacrifice covers all their sins. No, no, no. It covers all their past sin and the sin that they repented of when they got saved. If the sin after that... The Bible said there remained no more sacrifice. In other words, you are not still saved unless you repent. Amen? You are not covered unless you get back under the blood of Jesus. Amen? Amen. And so that's what he's talking about. He said, for if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remained no more sacrifice for sin. But what? Verse 27. But a, fearful, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour devour the adversaries and he used in, in Moses law because he was talking to these Jewish people they understood this he said he that despised Moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses under the law of Moses someone committed adultery there were two or three witnesses guess what happened they took them out and they stoned him to death amen just like that he said, that happened under the law of Moses. He said in verse 29, he said, How much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and had counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified. Remember that. The blood that sanctified him, he was once sanctified, that means he was saved. 
was sanctified an unholy thing and had done despise unto the spirit of grace. For ye know him that had said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord. And again, the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Amen. And so he's showing us here another portion of scripture that if someone who was once a Christian decided they would go back into sin and live, he said they're not covered. Amen. Debunking that doctrine of once saved, always saved. Once you're saved, you're not always saved unless you stay saved. Amen. Amen. When God saved you, it is God's will to take you to heaven. It is God's will for you to make it all the way in. But you still have to do your part. You still have to live right. You still have to obey the commandments of God. You still have to make it right when you sin. You're not covered for life. Amen? Amen. Every year you renew your insurance, don't you? You're not covered for life. <laughs> and so how is it? How do you think with God that you once come and you pray a prayer to the altar and you're good for life and you can just go and live anywhere you want? That's a lie of the devil. Amen? That's a very, very damnable doctrine. It destroys so many people. And trust me, I have dealt with number, with many of them, especially in North Carolina. Everywhere I went, as soon as I opened my mouth, I tried to talk to somebody. They bring this thing up. And, 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 and I have to, I mean, I spent most of my time there witnessing to the Baptists about this. <laughs> Not that I tried, it just, it just happened. Because that's what they believe. They believe you can never lose out with God if you accepted Jesus Christ once. It is not true. I'm sharing you straight from the Bible. That if you do it and you don't make it right and keep living right, you will not make it to heaven. I'm going to share one more verse and I, I, trust me, we're not even touching this yet. Well, not really. I'm almost done, but yeah. Let me just share a little bit more. Okay, same chapter, verses um, 35 to 39. We preach from this Sunday morning. He said, uh, Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which had great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. We talked about that Sunday morning. God have no pleasure in the death of the unrighteous. Amen. He said, but we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. And so he's showing us here tonight that uh, it is possible to go back to destruction. Perdition means destruction. Amen. And so that deals with a severe case where a person, where a person uh, knowingly turn away from the truth. They can lose out on their salvation. Amen. Let's look at another one real quick. And um. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 17 through 22. And this one deals with people who blindly follow false doctrine. They did not invest any time or energy to learn the truth, and so they were misled by false teachers and preachers. Amen? And so the one that I just shared with you deals with people who walk away from God knowingly. They will not make it into heaven. Amen? Unless they repent and come back to God. This one deals with those who are being deceived by false prophets and false teachers. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 17, he speaks to them, he said, These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, speaking of false teachers, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. Whilst, while they promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same he is brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome, the latter end is worse with them than the beginning." For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb 
the dog is turned to his, vo his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. And so he's talking about people who come to know the truth of Jesus Christ, they accepted God into their life, but instead of finding a preacher or a teacher that will teach in the truth, they find these great, this preacher that give them great swelling words of vanity, nice, motivated speech, and feel-good message, and God is an overcomer, and all these wonderful things, and all they talk about is the grace, 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 but no truth about living right. No truth about modesty. No truth about holiness. No truth about living a godly, holy, dedicated life. And so because they've, they've, they go and listen to these teachers, he said, they now begin to go back into a life of sin. And he said the latter end is worse than the beginning. He said it would have been better if they had never had heard the truth. And now they have known the truth, but they went back and they began to live a life of sin. He said it's worse for them. It's like a dog returned to his vomit or a sow, a pig that was washed into her wallowing in the mud. Don't tell me you can't walk away from God. Amen? That's the Bible teaching us that if we're not careful, we can go right back into the mess that God brought us out of. Amen? Should I continue or should I stop? I guess we can stop. We'll pick it up next time. I just have two more, but I'm, like I said, I'm barely touching it. It's so much, so, so, so deep to get into these things. But um, we'll leave it there for tonight, and we'll pick it up again. We'll go right back into this because, like I said, this is a doctrine that is deceiving millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people because they have bought into this false teaching that the devil had brought into the church that you can, once you accept Christ in your life, it doesn't matter. Yes, you want to do right and you want to do good, but if you fail and if you don't do right and if you don't live the way God wants you, you're still going to make it in. The Bible is showing us very clear that it's not going to happen. Amen? Amen? The Bible said, follow peace with all men. In Hebrews, in our same Bible, we'll get to it eventually. And I'll close with this verse of Scripture. Hebrews chapter, chapter 12, or chapter 10, I think it is. He said, follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Hebrews 12, 14. This even speaks of it too. I wasn't planning to share this tonight, but I'll just share this and finish out the Bible study. He said, follow peace, Hebrews 12, 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. And we'll close that with that tonight. We have to live right. And we have to stay right. We have to follow the truths. We have to go on to perfection. Leave the doctrine of grace. And move on to the truth of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Don't claim grace, grace, grace when there is true, true, truth. True, true, truth. <laughs> there also. Amen? And with that, we'll close the Bible study tonight. And Nathan will, will close us tonight. Thank you, sir. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your Word, which is the truth that speaks to us, and saves us, and keeps us or walking in your pathway to heaven. We ask that you bless each and every one here tonight, their safety place of residence. Bring us back plenty of time. You guys name Amen. Amen.